The Metropolitan Police refused to confirm or deny whether Mark Stone was an undercover officer, but pressure is mounting. Tonight, Nottinghamshire Police announced they're asking the Independent Police Complaints Commission to investigate the lead-up to the collapse of the case, and a separate inquiry into the conduct of the undercover operation is also being discussed. Richard Watson, well, we asked the Crown Prosecution Service and the police for interviews to discuss the implications of our case, the case, but our requests were declined. I'm joined here in the studio by Sophie Stevens, who was initially arrested by the police in connection with this case, but was never charged. Also here is the former police officer, Peter Blexley, one of the founding members of Scotland's Yard's undercover unit, and Lord MacDonald, the former director of public prosecutions. Uh, Sophie, first, how did you know Mark Kennedy? I started to get involved in the environmental social justice movement about seven years ago, which, as I understand it, is about the same time that Mark Stone or Kennedy also started to get involved. So almost every major political action or protest that I was on, he was there somewhere. Um, I was first introduced to him as Transport Mark, um, and he was always responsible for, for driving, for organising transport, for hiring vehicles. Um, I was surprised that it was him, but uh, tragically, I'm not surprised that there were undercover police officers in the movement. Was he at Glen Eagles? Because it was some Dubai, yes, he, he was at Glen Eagles. Absolutely, he was at Glen Eagles. But what do, I've but, discovered... But do, you think, do you think that he, just looking at the way he operated... Do you think he was a camp follower or an agent provocateur? I think that's a difficult call to make. I think that he was... I think that the example that was given was very interesting mm -hmm. because I was in a vehicle going down to the action at Nottingham and we received a telephone call to say that there were police cars outside the power station that we were not... We were considering calling off the action and we were ready to go home. It was only because Mark Stone or Kennedy drove past and said that there were no cars there that the, actually the action continued. And I think that that was a decision because if the police had wanted to prevent that action from happening, they could have easily mm. arre arrested a small group of people and saved huge amounts of money weeks or months before because he was in that core group. But they decided to leave it to arrest 114 people because they wanted, I believe, to police politically and to try and damage a protest movement. Because if you arrest that number of people, even if you only charge 26, you put that large number on bail and that pre prevents them from being involved in protest, and that is political policing. Now, you are a, an undercover cop or aware of long-standing. Do you think that's how undercover officers should behave? Well, I, I think there's a large question about proportionality here. You know, was this the only tactic that the police could use to gain the information they wanted? He said sledgehammer to crack a nut, and he indicated there were other officers involved in the environmental movement. Do you think that's likely? That's absolutely true, and there are also undercover people from the private security sector working against climate campaigners, um, and, and, and so it goes on. But from your own experience, I mean, I take it you were never undercover in one operation for seven years, a long, long time. No, I wasn't, and I was never undercover against climate uh, campaigners because my senior management at the time would have regarded me as too important a resource mm -hmm. to be deployed against people that they would have regarded as fluffy tree huggers. But do you, do you uh, understand the mo model when you look at his own case that he possibly did have Stockholm Syndrome, that he probably did switch sides? Absolutely, and I think part of the problem that's arisen here is that there may not have been clearly defined goals, mm -hmm. that this operation may just have kind of dragged on and on and morphed from one aim to another and the best undercover operations are those that are clearly targeted with clearly achievable goals. Lord McDonald, these are fluffy tree huggers. What Sophie said was, you know, over a hundred people arrested. Disproportionate? Well, I wouldn't describe them in that way, but they're not world-class criminals, that's for sure. They're not terrorists. They're not criminals at all. Presumably. They're not, well, uh, the, the, these ones clearly aren't, the ones mm -hmm. who, who have been acquitted. I mean, some have pleaded guilty. But the point I'm making is this is not serious, outrageous, dangerous crime that threatens the state. Now, what we're talking about here is a long-term 
police operation, seven years. On your watch? One individual. On well, a Labour government, under, you know, well, I'm, 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 you're independent. I'm not associated with the Labour no, government. No, no. We're talking about a long-term police operation, a, a single officer mm -hmm. embedded for seven years. This is not a terrorist organisation. I, I, I do think there is, as, as you said, a serious question of proportionality here. But is there not also a serious question about the rule of law? Because... There's evidence collected that was inadmissible in court. I mean, we're having all this row about control orders. And well, this is, the, this is the problem, isn't it? it, it, it it's fine to have uh, police officers embedded in criminal organisations and undercover police work detects an enormous amount of crime and brings people to justice. But it has to be done in a way which obtains admissible evidence for court. And the, the real question that arises here, we've just heard the tapes, is whether this man was ever going to be capable of developing admissible evidence for the prosecution but to use in court. But he was there for seven years and he has presumably been involved in previous um, incidents where cases were brought to court. So we don't know actually already. Well, I don't know some what he was people have been actually found guilty on his evidence, which was inadmissible in well, court. Well, no, but he's, I mean, if, if he's given evidence in the past, no, that yeah. it wouldn't necessarily be inadmissible. The point is he's been involved well, he in this operation for seven years against people like this, this, this young woman over here. And it, one, one has to ask, really, are, is, is this an appropriate use of resources, essentially? But also, is this how a modern democracy should operate? Well, I don't think there's an objection intrinsically to undercover policing. Undercover policing is a valuable tool which, as I've said, brings serious criminals to justice. The question is whether this sort of activity, I don't think it's tree-hugging, I think these are people who have a serious uh, issue of conscience which they're acting upon, whether that sort of activity really requires the sort of state intervention mm. which this man's behaviour represents. Well, why do you think there has been this level of state intervention, Sophie? I think that... <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that's because the police police politically. And I think that I said earlier that I wasn't surprised that we had un un an undercover policeman in our movement, not because of actions that we have taken, but because from my experiences, unfortunately, I know that we are much further along the road towards having a police force that polices politically and defends the interests of corporations. And that's a really, a really dangerous road to go down, and we're much further down it than we like to believe. And do you think, if, that, if, if, Sof if Sophie's argument is correct, then that police officers feel they should be used for such an endeavour? Well, yes, I think, I think a large part of what Sophie says cuts to the very core of the matter. This is about finance. Mm. Because, so should the police be involved at all? Well, that's a very good question, and we know from recent reports conducted by the police's own inspectorate that there are huge failings with regards to their policing of public order events. Mm -hmm. You've also got the situation where people in the are saying, you know, we've got scant resources. You know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, we don't know, is devoted to undercover operations. Perhaps some of it is organised crime, obviously, some of it is terrorism, but some, but some of it is on environmental campaigns. You know, people must wonder if that is a good use of their money. I think people will, will ask that question. I think people will look at the tapes you've played and listen to the, the evidence and ask themselves whether we really need to be paying for someone like Mark to be pretending to be an environmental uh, 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 protester and, for and, seven and years. And is there a danger that it is seen as political for the very reasons that Sophie Well, I think there is a real risk of that because someone is making the decision about where their financial priorities lie um, and the, the decision, this particular decision seems a little bizarre and people will, will ask questions about how, how it was arrived at. Now, just going back to, uh, before we finish to Mark Kennedy himself, I mean, from these tapes he sounds a bit like a broken man but I mean, he went so far as having another relationship, embedding himself so far that presumably he, he was reading a very schizophrenic existence. Yes, indeed, and that's undercover policing is littered with tales of broken careers, mm. fractured lives. Mm. At one point, I was one of them. Mm. Um, undercover policing puts unique Did strains. Did you get too close sometimes? Um, yes, I think that's a fair mm. comment. Uh, and there was a lot of there was a lot of pressures. You know, there was organised crime gangs trying to kill me, and I had to live in the witness protection mm. program, and all those kind of, of of added pressures. He will be in a very lonely place now. His former colleagues will shun him. I'm sure that Sophie mm. and her friends will shun him as well. Would you forgive him, Sophie? Do you think? Forgive him? Goodness me. That's a question. I don't think we can really trust anything he says right now. I think it's really difficult. But uh, I do think that we have to be clear that this isn't just in isolation. There's all sorts of political policing that's happening in the UK, and it's really damaging and undermines democracy. Thank you all very much indeed.